Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald near Decatur at Rock Springs Conservation Area where they're getting ready for their first ever hummingbird festival. Now you may have heard about these before. This is where people attract hummingbirds and an avian ecologist traps those birds, bans them, people get a chance to adopt the hummingbird and then they set it free and hopefully in the future sometime somebody will capture that hummingbird again and learn more about it, where it's been, when it was captured and those kinds of things. Uh, the whole thing is an educational, but it's also a thrilling experience because people just flat love hummingbirds. Don't they, Jeff? They do. People <laughs> love it, especially if they get the chance to hold one right in their hand. Yeah. yeah, and I said, you know, people get a chance to adopt them. Well, they actually do because after Vern Clean tag or abandons the bird, right. then the person actually gets to release it and hold it in, uh, for right. a brief moment anyway. If their name is called, they better listen carefully and they get to come up and hold it for just a few seconds and then release it. Not everyone will get to do that, yeah. but if you ever do it one time, it'll change your life. It's really I, neat. I, I mentioned earlier that uh, you know, you've been preparing for this for a while. It's your first hummingbird festival, but you've actually been thinking about it for three years, haven't you? We have. We've had hummingbirds here over the many, many years because they find good habitat, but as we put out the feeders, the general donation from a, one of our volunteers they began to come more and more and more and we just put out more and more every week yeah. until as you said we have about 40 feeders wow. out there and yeah. we were filling them and changing them two to three times a week we had a, a volunteer that came in and helped out with it so yeah. it's been a lot of fun and people that are coming and going are stopped in their tracks when they come off the trail just to stop and gaze because they're about getting dive bombed you know with yeah. hummingbirds coming yeah, well, in to feed and, and until you get used to it you, you kind of do go like that but when you say oh it's just a hummingbird and I hurt you right it just you just it, my, you're not it, sure what it is. Right. Get your attention. It's fast. It looks like a big moth. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. It does. Um, but but they're but they're gorgeous to look at, and people throughout the area love to attract them. Uh, you, they don't have 40 feeders out most people, but they put a few out, and they, they enjoy watching. They do, and we've learned that the more you put out, the less they fuss with each other because they all have almost their own feeder, mm -hmm. and that's a lot of fun. Plus, they get to see them up close and personal. As you can see, they're right by our window, so when we're in the building or out of the building, we get a yeah. real good close-up look yeah. at the ruby-throated hummingbird. Which, if, if we look over your shoulder here, we can see that, that all along these buildings are, are the feeders, and, and we can see there, there are some birds. We'll get a lot closer look than this but you can see that the birds are coming on are starting to come in we had them alarmed a little bit because we were putting up a little camera equipment you were putting up the the traps and right and so they get mixed up a little bit don't they they do a little bit spooked you know yeah. from the people yeah. but as you can see once we got settled in they have begun to come back more and more and I think late afternoons they come in more because they kind of take a break it was very hot today so they took a little break yeah. and now they're coming in to, to do their feeding and I've watched them feeding up to 8 30 or 9 o'clock at night uh-huh you had quite a, a, a reception for this. You put out the call, you said you wanted people to, to make a reservation. You got more than 100 people that want to come, come see them. We do. We have uh, <laughs> at least 115 or 20, and mm -hmm. I have a feeling some people will come this evening that maybe have not, but that gave us an idea of how many to yeah. expect. Our lot is only so big for cars, yeah, yeah. and uh, obviously set up and ready to go with the registration and the uh, award. we got some door prizes and I want to mention that Decatur Audubon is also co-sponsoring this event this evening. Mm -hmm. Good so for them. Good we're for proud them. of them. Um, so uh, just for people who may not know much about hummingbirds of course they're, they are coming in here to feed and we'll get a chance to look at a lot of them but that also means that they're probably nesting around here as well doesn't it? Yes after May and June came along we knew that they probably were and when our numbers began to increase that was our goal was to capture those fledglings and keep them here and keep them fed and coming back more and more, which now we know that hopefully they'll come back here next year when they migrate back into our area. Yeah. They arrive in May, early May, after the yeah. flowers have begun to bloom, and we hope to have even more. So based on what I'm seeing today, this is not the last festival we'll yeah. have. This is the nice thing about hummingbirds, if you can get them to return, they have this god-awful long migratory pattern that they do, but if they live through that and if they get back, they will oftentimes come back to nest in the same place. They right? will, very much so. And many times they don't make it more than a year, but they can live up to five years or so. Mm -hmm. And as you say, that migration, when they head out across the Gulf of Mexico, oh they fly goodness. for 18 hours straight, 600 miles. Yeah. And it's just oh, wow. unbelievable. And like I say, if they, get, if they get to Mexico and if they get back, and right. they're looking for their nest. They're looking, right. And they're going to remember that you had these feeders out. They're they be they know where to go. It's amazing <laughs> to see what they can do. Way beyond what you or I could probably do. Yeah. So 
It's cool. We really enjoy it. We're so looking forward to 100 plus people yeah. being able to come and discover the hummingbirds and discover us. Many We have a family that came from Robinson, Illinois. Mm -hmm. They drove for a couple of hours. We've got people coming from Bloomington and Springfield and yeah, all over. So. Terrific. Well, we get a chance to see the birds up close, how the banding process goes, and see some people hold a hummingbird in their hand for the right. first time. It'll right. be a lot of fun. Thanks, Jeff. It's great. Thank you so much. Well, Vern Clean, I can already count probably a dozen hummingbirds just as I as I look around behind, so it should be a good day to capture. It looks like birds. it from yeah. uh, initial signs. Yeah, yeah. Now you're you're an avian ecologist, right? A retired avian ecologist. That's my title. When you when you were working, what, who did you work for? I was with the DNR for 30 years uh -huh. out of the Springfield office. Uh -huh. And you have been very active doing this since your retirement, haven't you? Well, I was active prior to that, but it increased more so after retirement, mm -hmm, at mm -hmm. least this aspect of it. Now, you know, bird, this capturing and banding birds is not something that anybody is encouraged to do. You're supposed to be trained and educated about this, right? We have to have federal banding permits. Um, a lot of people are avocational. In other words, they do it as a sideline to their real professions, uh, but you still have to go through some training, and hummingbird is even extra special training. It is. Is it because they're so fragile? Well, that's part of it too, but the U.S. Geological Survey who's responsible for providing the bands and the permits, all the bands for all the other birds are already made in for us. For hummingbirds, we have to make our own bands. They come in cards. No and kidding. And they come in 300 bands a card. And to get the bands ready for use, I have a 16-step process, including filing the edges down so there's no sharp edges, so we don't injure the birds, uh -huh. and putting them on safety pins, and then yeah. so forth. That's it's the smallest bird anybody bans, I guess, that right? That's correct. Okay, and that's why you have to be extra careful because they're so small. Mm -hmm. What what we have, so we look here, we have 40 feeders, and we also see a couple of these traps that that you have put up. And why don't you t explain to us how that how that works? Well, what we've done is we've taken down nearly all the other feeders right now. And we've concentrated a trap in each one, I mean a feeder in each one of these traps, so that's the only place the birds can go. Uh -huh. So if they want to continue feeding here, they'll eventually go inside the trap, and then we just push the button like this, and, and catch them on the other side. Okay. And then we go in and take them out and take them back to our banding table for mm -hmm. processing. Mm -hmm. Once, are they hard to get your hands on? They fly around. Mm -hmm. yeah. Quite a bit. <laughs> you take it. Say, yes, they are. It's right. a challenge to get those birds. You don't want to corner them. You don't want yeah. to mess around with their bills or anything like that. So a little bit of care. Yeah. But once you get used to taking them out, you can do it. Mm -hmm. and, and we take them back to the table for processing yeah. and banding. Yeah. Okay. And then well, the we'll, public gets to release them. Okay. We'll, we'll look. We'll look forward to seeing how you process them and uh, and release them. Then. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Look forward to a great yeah. day. Yeah. It is a great day. <laughs> oh, we got him. Okay. Okay, Vern, that didn't take long, did it, to catch the first one? It was like he, he knew when he was supposed to go in there. I forgot to bring my pink bag, though. Not so easy, is it? No. My goodness. They're active. There he is. Okay, this is the ruby-throated, and this is the only variety we have in Illinois. That is correct. Huh? Mm -hmm. I should have brought a pink bag over here while I was... Okay, now you reset the trap again before you go, right? I do. Okay. I hate doing it with the bird in my hand, though, but... Okay. 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 I'm going to set this here. Do we know who the first adoption is? Okay, so this one did, does get adopted, huh? They all will be adopted. Okay. Can, can, can we get a good close-up look? And Vern, can you sort of give us a, a briefing on this bird as we're looking? Okay, at? we're looking at an adult female. And what I was looking at in the bills, if it was a young bird, it would have the grooves on the top of the bill right down to there, and it doesn't have grooves. So when it comes back next year, um, those grooves will be gone. So now I'm going to put a band on this leg. Here's the band. 
Oh, they're tiny. Then I open it up. Oh, I see. And then I'll put it in the hole in the pliers. Well, that's a very special pliers, isn't it? Yeah. It's special Made just for, this. for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I find that leg. Those legs are hard to find, my goodness. And I'm hidden under the feathers. And right there. Mm -hmm. Can I see them? Yeah. We'll show it to you here in a moment. So there's the band on the leg. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to fly Julius. Wow. Okay, and that, that will not bother that bird. It nope. won't weigh it down. It nope. just hardly weighs a thing, doesn't it? It's a bracelet. It's just like it's just like on the uh, safety pins. It spins around on the leg. And you mentioned earlier that they come on cards like this. These are the bands. Right? That's the band. That's okay, right. and you cut those off, and you cut like 20 will fit on a safety pin. Yes, a tiny and you can read those numbers. And that's the, that identifies this bird. That's correct. And you'll record this bird. It was caught on this day at what location? At Rock Springs uh, Conservation Area. Can I touch the on, hummingbird? And you also have the name of the person that, oh, look, she gets to touch it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I'll take a couple of quick measurements. Mm -hmm. that, must, 17. that must be something like an alien, alien abduction. <laughs> can, can we? Can we? Can okay, I think someone has already adopted this bird, so we will let that person let it go. But what I will do before that is I'm going to let stand out here and let people take pictures of it. Oh, me. And we'll see if there's any more birds going in while we're... If you see any more birds... Okay, I'll stand right out here. And people want to get some pictures of it. <laughs> now, who was the one that adopted this one? I don't know. Back here, Good. okay. Okay. Come on over. She gets to it because she, she's got the certificate for it. Are you ready? Okay. You get to keep that. Can my friend get up here so sure. she can take a picture? <laughs> you only need one hand. Just put your hand out flat. What I'm going to have you do is curl your fingers as if you had something in it. Okay, real loose. Okay, now open it up. I'm going to put the hummingbird in, and don't put your thumb around. Just real loose. Okay. Now, it's been mesmerized a little bit because it's gone through this pink bag and in my hands. And So when you open up your hands, it doesn't realize it's free to go yet. So open up slowly, and it'll stay there. for. Back up. Let, her, let, let other people see if you... Does it go into the pink bags? I put them in the pink bags. Can you put your fingers down for us? Go ahead and put your fingers. There you go. Look at that. It's going to fly away. Oh, hi. Once it Zach, figures out no. what's going okay. on. Okay. I thought it was uh, Audrey. I saw you sitting out there and I thought, I know who they are. Oh, they're not supposed to be going that way. <laughs> oh, the eyes are blinking now. <laughs> He's like, I'm out of here. The hummingbird was like, I'm out of here. Brenda, w what does it feel like to hold a hummingbird? Oh, it's something I've always wanted to do, and you couldn't feel it. You could, it didn't weigh a thing? No, no, it was just there. If I hadn't looked, I wouldn't have known it was there. No kidding. No kidding. It seemed like, and he said that it would be dazed, you know, and it would just right. sit and it sat there. And, and just sat, sat there. there. And sat there for a long time. I know, and I kept getting closer and closer to it, and it still just sat there. <laughs> <laughs> could you feel its heartbeat? No. No. And see, I've always heard from people who have held him, I always heard that you could feel that, that real fast little heartbeat. Well, I, but you couldn't, I didn't huh? feel it, no. He it, was really out of it. It really <laughs> was. He was really dazed. Yeah. Huh? Um, had you ever done this before? I have gone to these before, but there were so many people that they ran out of hummingbirds. So I never got to do it. You were first this time. Yes. They weren't gonna run out of birds for you to no, do No, we were the first ones here. Is that right? Yes, so we you came, signed up and you we were We came an uh, hour and 15 minutes early. So you paid $5 to adopt this hummingbird. Right. And you know what's cool about this? If they capture that hummingbird again, they're gonna write down the number of, on the band and they're gonna know that that hummingbird was caught here and they're going to know that it was your bird. Right, that's cool, that's cool. <laughs> and they will call you. Yeah, that's neat, I like that. <laughs>
<laughs> and then you'll say, hey, my bird made it all the way back from Mexico. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> well, thanks for talking to us. Well, it was nice meeting yeah, you. Thank you. It was a good experience. <laughs> Okay. Well, we'll lose. Okay, I don't think she's going to stay very long. Okay. Well, wait a minute, she's wait not wait dazed, is she? Okay, let's get a picture. Oh, oh, oh. look at that, sweetheart. Oh. Sue, it's not, it's not, it's all blurry. What do I do? I don't know. <laughs> it's probably focusing in on something that's farther away. There you go, probably too close. How's that look? Can I let him go now? Can you feel his heart beating? Yeah. Oh, can you? Yeah. He looks like he's fine. He's not flashing. He's not taking a picture. Well, it'll be on camera. Hold on, Oh, I'm maybe sorry, he's baby. Maybe he's, sorry. maybe he's fine with this. He doesn't look like he's in any distress. Yeah. Okay. There's, she took the picture. Okay. okay, can I let him go now? Hmm? Okay, let's see if he'll stay. <laughs> he's dazed. He doesn't know what to do. I guess it's a she, isn't it? Yeah. He's okay, sweetheart. So pretty. <laughs> it is. And once they go, boy, they really go. It's not going to go. It's not going to go. Yeah, she's going to go. <laughs> she will. She's going to go. Just watch. I'm just waiting here. You don't usually get a chance to look at them this long. This is a big break. There you go. That was great. Sue, what did it feel like? What? It was pretty cool. It was most people don't get a chance to hold them that long. Yeah. A lot of times I've seen them where they, as soon as they open their hand, uh -huh. boom, they're off. Yeah. Do you have hummingbirds at home? Do you feed them? Uh, just started this year. Is that right? Yeah. Um, and have you had a lot of them come to the house? Uh, a few. Um, I've seen them um, uh, feed off of a fuchsia that I have there. They and love that color, don't they? They, they, they? Actually, they love what the fuchsia has, and because of that reason, yeah. I guess they like the color, yeah. And uh, I have a couple of feeders out. And, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And so they're around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, you'd never held one before, though? No. 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 Could, did you feel anything like the heartbeat or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, a little bit. Did you? Uh -huh. Was it real fast? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yep. thanks for visiting with us. That was thanks. fun, I'll bet. It, it was, yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks. Clara Roberts, we just let a hummingbird go. Right. And then you came up to me and you showed me this miracle, this little miracle right. of engineering. And we're assuming that this is a hummingbird nest because you had hummingbirds and actually you tra right. how did you track it down? How'd you track it down to this to this location? We were standing in our front yard and our son was out there and he kept going. And I said, What's wrong with you? And he said, Well, something's buzzing me. And we finally found that after a long time, amongst the leaves, you know, yeah. over. And you had been, so you had been feeding hummingbirds, huh? You knew On they the were around. On the other side of the house. Oh, I knew yeah. they was around. Yeah. yeah. I knew and they was of around. course, they, we know that they do build nests around where, right. the, where they feed. And yeah. that, what else could use that? Nothing else is small enough oh, no. to use that. No. Isn't that precious? And so I had a friend that had her camera. And they got me up on the very top of the step mm -hmm. ladder, and they held each side. And she had two eggs, and then she came back. Oh, and so it sat was still an active she, nest at that she time. She was starting to; they were starting to hatch, but not completely. And she came back, and I, and I sat on there. And what then time I of year was that? Do you remember? I think it was in the fall. So they hatched thought, late before maybe, they. Maybe I'm not sure. Yeah. But I was okay. It was so, but this was last year. Yeah. Okay. Last year. And so you let her raise her family, hatch her eggs, and raise her family, and then you went back and cut and it I out. I went back and cut it off. Okay. Well, they probably came back this year. That's why I wondered yeah. if she would come back to that nest. Build but another one. Come back and build I another hope one. So, yeah. but I couldn't find one this year. No, you have to wait for yeah, your right. son to do yeah. this again before you can find. But I that. thought it was amazing. I thought it was worth uh, 
cutting off the tree and mm -hmm. so people could see how yeah. small the nest it is. It is precious. And those two little eggs, yeah. would they look like a kernel of corn or even smaller no, than that? It's probably like that. Hold that up for, so we can see it. Like that, probably. so they're pretty good size eggs, aren't they? Not well, bigger than I thought they would yeah, be. Yeah, actually. for an S that size. Yeah, that's precious. But, that's precious. Okay. Thanks for bringing this. Have Thank you showed you. it to Vern? Uh, he said go set it down somewhere, and he hasn't really. He's kind of busy it. right now, yeah, <laughs> catching birds. Yeah, thanks, Clara. All right. Thank you, Melody. All these folks came out here today to get educated about specifically about hummingbirds. Yes, yes, and it's interesting from your point of view because what you do is you arrange classes for teachers yes okay. and, and you've got a group of them here today and mm -hmm. and this just happened to fall right in to with what they're doing it kind of worked out nice didn't yes. it yes. what did y'all do out here today well it's the, our hummingbird festival and uh vernon clean has been trapping yeah. hummingbirds and banding them yeah so, and, yeah. and your yeah. teachers they probably haven't seen this before the they're here learning like backyard bird birding basics i guess yes. is that sort of what yes it is? that's what the teacher's workshop is backyard birds yeah yes. yeah mm -hmm. and and so they probably have just have just started their classwork or, or even the, are they in school yet these teachers i well i think some of them are and probably some are not yet yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but this will this would be a neat thing for them to be able to teach the kids about yes when in in the fall when they all come back to school yes that's right so what was their response to what they saw here today well i think they really enjoyed it yeah did any of them have a chance to uh, uh adopt a bird no. or hold a bird or no any, none no? of them did no, no. But now they got to go back. Now you've got another class inside. Now they yes. have to go back indoors and yes. do the boring stuff now. <laughs> I hope it's not boring. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to present the rest of the class. Huh? Uh, I am and Janet Littlejohn, another yeah. naturalist here yeah. at the district, conservation okay. district. Right. Mm -hmm. Get those teachers uh, more well-versed on when they look out the window what they're looking at. Huh? Yes, yeah. yes, okay. that's right. Thanks, Melody. You're welcome. <laughs> Julie, I was I was interviewing somebody over there, and I, I was on my way back to where they're banding the hummingbirds, and somebody said, did you see the hummingbird cake? Oh. And I said, no, I didn't see the hummingbird cake, and I came and looked at this, and I thought, well, why do they call it a hummingbird cake? Because I don't see it, a hummingbird on it or anything like that. Well, what's, what's the... it's a southern recipe, and the folklore is that hummingbirds look for the sweetest nectar. Yeah. Anything uh, below 25% sugar, they'll reject. And this is a very sweet cake. And so the person who's first um, made the first recipe called it a hummingbird cake. Is that right? And it's just been passed down. It's yeah. just that's what it is. Well, what's in this hummingbird cake? It's kind of like a spice cake, really, but it's three layers. The traditional cream cheese frosting. The inside is the nuts and the cinnamon. And mm -hmm. the pineapple is another unique ingredient. Yeah, and you made it. And the other reason for the... The cake is like everyone doesn't know what to do with brown bananas, right? So right. it's one of those other right. things you can do with. They're even sweeter. So if mm -hmm. you want to make it really sweet, you can put brown bananas. Yeah, they say in the darker there, huh? the better. Really? Okay. So it's, it has two full cups of <laughs> overripe bananas. Wow, that will sweeten anything yeah. up. Okay, and like so. you said, that way you don't have to throw them away. And you made the cake. Yep. And, and well, and got help from, got plenty of kids, a lot of helpers. Yeah, yeah. So. And, and you're going to be sharing it, right? Yeah, with whoever. With, with, every, with yeah. everybody. We hope so. Until it's gone. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> We're not bringing okay. it home. Well, listen, thank you. I like it's to mark an occasion with food. So, Hummingbird Festival needed a hummingbird, hummingbird cake. Hummingbird cake. You betcha. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Audra, uh, in Eliopolis, where you live, yes. you are very selective about the birds you feed, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> you don't just put out a bunch of feeders, right? No. Why not? <laughs> I really don't know. I just always had one feeder and... One feeder and one, feeder. And one and bird? One bird. You well, got... no, I've had more birds, but he chases them off. This one bird does. This one He's bird a bully. Does. He likes me. So he, he's a bully. He, he likes to have his feeder and nobody else gets to, gets, right. gets to feed it. Right. Does this same bird seem to come back year after year? It looks like the same bird. He's not banded. Right, right. But yeah. it looks like the same looks bird. Like same and he bird. behaves the same way. He behaves the same. I'll be darned. What got you attracted to hummingbirds? Or hummingbird? <laughs> I, <laughs> I always have. I've always loved them. I just, I don't know, when I was a kid at home we had them. Uh-huh. Only we had more than one. <laughs> yeah, more than one, right. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't such a bully. <laughs> no, he wasn't. Um, and you're next in line to, to adopt one. And if we can look over your shoulder, we see Vern is reaching in to get your oh, bird as we speak. So you are going to get out of here with a bird. Why do you want to adopt a hummingbird? 
just for the fun of it. Something unique. Have you ever held one? Never. And I always want to. You're going to get to do that. Mm -hmm. You're going to get to do that and then it's going to, you're going to hold it and it's going to sit there and, and it's going to be perplexed and dazed for a while and then it's going to wake up and it's going to take off just like nothing happened. I don't know and then it's gone. And then, but it's banded. Yeah. That's the nice thing. See, it's banded. And they Maybe it'll come to your it. house. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> Wouldn't All that right. be something? I just, this other one will bully it around though and it'll <laughs> chase it away. <laughs> Probably. Audra, thanks for visiting with us. I'm, I'm glad that you're going to finally get your bird. He's got that pink bag with the bird and that he's going to bring it to you. So thank you. All right. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Vern Clean says that first of these uh, ruby-throated hummingbirds, the males have already started uh, to, to migrate for the, sp for the uh, fall. And he says by about September 15th, you'll see a large wave of them continue to go south to the Gulf of Mexico for that long flight over to Mexico. These hummingbird festivals take place throughout the summer. And if you want to find out where and when they, are, when they take place, you can go to hummingbird.net and find out the various locations. With another Illinois Story in Decatur, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.